Now, MPs have warned that any failure in the process of moving people to universal credit from older so-called legacy benefits could lead to real-world misery for thousands. Yeah, the Department of Work and Pensions must ensure it helps claimants, some of whom are vulnerable, to switch and not lose their benefits. Well, the DWP has insisted that benefits are only ever stopped as a last resort after multiple unsuccessful attempts to engage with someone. Uh, let's talk to former advisor to the Bank of England, Dr Roger Gewell, who's here. Good to see you, Roger. Um, Good morning. How concerning is this, or is this just picking up on a potential sort of problem that hasn't really happened yet? I think it's a real problem. Uh, it affects... Fortunately, not a huge number of people. There's about 2.2 million people on the six different legacy benefits. And they want to move about, well, less than half, about 900,000 of them to a universal credit. And uh, it really isn't working. As I read the reports and uh, the intel, I, I, I kind of wonder if these are the folks who've designed the Rwanda plan. I mean, it's just a litany of unbelievable uh, government, civil service, absolute mess-up failures. So, for example, 21% of people have not transferred from the legacy benefits to the universal credit, and they've had their benefits stopped. Uh, so that 21% is just a tad higher than the 3% that the DWP estimated would be the case. Uh, secondly, they also don't fully understand, they say, why the people are not claiming after receiving a notice to uh, migrate. They, quote, lack the data to ensure people are claiming the benefits they're entitled to. I mean, it's unbelievable. Mm. My first question is, why don't they just pay them? Why do they actually have to apply? A lot of these are elderly, vulnerable people down on their luck, you know. I mean, why make them suffer through that? And they are cutting people off who haven't applied. Thirdly, it will cost, surprise, surprise, 900 million pounds more and take six, hundred, uh, six years longer than they estimated to do this. Why? Uh, back into, largely due to the government's decision, quote, to delay moving income-related employment and support allowance claimants to universal credit. Why they delayed it, I don't know. I can't answer that. I've read several different reasons, but none of them really make mm -hmm. sense. Uh, the DWP's evidence on the long-term impact is limited as its evaluations have only considered the short-term effect. I mean, Roger, you're, you're listing all of that out there. It, it makes you question, is this a system that's even fit for purpose? I mean, this, surely claimants shouldn't be facing real-world misery over universal credit claimants. I, I, I mean, it, it, even if it was only 3% of 900,000 people, that's a lot of tens of thousands of families suffering. And if it's 21 percent, it's frightening. And no, it's obviously not fit for a purpose. They don't have the data. They can't explain why it's not working, why it costs more, why it takes longer. Um, and as I say, I'd like an answer to the question, why, why can't you know, we all got during the pandemic, we all received checks and things. We got mm. we got our fuel 67 pound payments. Why do they make people apply, and if they don't apply, cut them off? There's just something that's very wrong here. It seems like it's, a, as much as anything else, a data issue, which yeah. is what we're, we have with, with um, migration and, and illegal, legal and illegal migration. And, and excuse people. me, so many other things. Yeah, so, so what is wrong with the systems in government that they, you know, they cannot provide the data? In 2024, you think it'd all be on some server somewhere? Uh, I interviewed Nigel Farage a long time ago, well, eight months ago, about why we have such poor leadership. And he, if you, if you Google my surname and Farage, you can see the video, and it's quite interesting, his answers. But there is a new AI, artificial intelligence uh, app, called Perplexity, which has just become very popular and which was recommended by uh, Arianna Huffington, the founder of the HuffPost. And it's really quite good. And I asked it yesterday, um, why are politicians so poor? Why does all this happen? And it said basically in four different ways that they may be very intelligent and capable in their own right, 
but they have to dumb things down to get and stay elected because that's what the po- the populace doesn't want nuanced explanations. I found that really quite interesting. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah, Luminac. Um, Roger, good to see you this morning. 